wish to give a memorial gift in honor of Mayor Rimmel. The Independence Japanese Sister City, the Chicago Alton Depot, Independence Historic Sites, Mid-Continent Genealogy Center, or any independence charity of your choice. So we're saddened to learn of this news, and we hope that many of you will be able to join the family and remember Don at 4 o'clock on August 22nd at the Cable Dahmer Arena. Now, our invocation this evening will be presented by Joey Candio, pastor of Grace Church. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. <laughs> I guess not. Um, and we will proceed with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. We did have two citizens who requested to speak to the council this evening. The first is Kayla Burns, who requests to speak regarding breed-specific legislation, recommendation, and repeal. Ms. Burns, are you here this evening? Oh, you're online. Okay, very good. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, does my time start now? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, council members. My name is Kayla Burns, and I am a resident and registered voter of Independence. I am here to ask you to please remove the pit bull language from our city's ordinance. I would tell you my story about not being able to adopt multiple dogs that have crossed my path just because of their breed, but I would rather spend my time discussing with you why a ban on Staffordshire and Bull Terrier breeds is harmful, ineffective, and costly. This is a good time to point out that pit bull is not even a breed. It is a derogatory term assigned to a multitude of breeds who exhibit certain physical features that our city government has deemed threatening, solely based on a look and not of the actions of the dog itself. The ban is dangerously broad, and if it's not repealed, would continue to target any dog that resembles a pit bull. Dogs who are friendly and well socialized could be killed just because they look a certain way and not at all because of their actions. This is based on the unsupported assumption that one common breed is more dangerous than others. Why do we need to ban an entire breed that is already covered under the broad animal ordinances that Independence already has that restrict any dangerous dogs? Independence's city code already outlaws animal fighting and fight training and pu provides punishment for nuisance, vicious, and dangerous dogs. It is not then necessary to ban the Staffordshire and Bull Terrier breeds too, if they are already included in those ordinances. This law criminalizes innocent dogs and forbids responsible, caring owners from adopting animals who need a loving home. Breed-specific laws simply don't work. The stated purpose is to reduce dog bites and attacks, and while many municipalities have passed these laws, there's no statistical evidence that they make communities safer for people or companion animals. In fact, they often make matters worse, uh, like in Florissant, Missouri. Between 2005 and 2015, after they enacted a similar ban, reported dog bites doubled despite the decline in the city's population. It is so ineffective that the following organizations oppose BSL. The Centers for Disease Control, the American Veterinary and Medical Association, the ASBCA, and the American Bar Association. Not only does breed-specific language burden owners and keep people from moving to independence, but it is costly and time-consuming for our animal control staff and now our city-managed shelter to manage every single pit bull breed animal that enters the city. If you were not at the public hearing regarding this issue earlier this year, you should at least know that the room could not even hold the number of people who showed up to support the repeal. Out of the multiple dozens of people that spoke, less than a handful actually favored the ban. In fact, there were two dog survivors, uh, dog attack survivors, that spoke in favor of the repeal because they understand that you can't punish an entire set of breeds based on the actions of a few dogs whose owners were careless and irresponsible. Independence is keeping owners from animals that need love in homes and keeping animals from owners that need love and companionship themselves. I ask you to either consider repealing the ban yourselves or at least put it to a vote on the November ballot and allow citizens to show you how much they disagree with this egregious ban. The deadline to add items to the November ballot is August 25th, so time is running out. I ask you to act swiftly so that independence can repeal this ineffective and costly legislation and instead work toward enforcing the existing dangerous and vicious dogs ordinances. Thank you very much for taking the time to hear from the public on this important issue. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Madam City Clerk, I neglected to call the roll. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and call the roll? Council members Huff? Here. Perkins? Here. Stewart? Here. DeLucy? Here. Steinmeier? Here. Hobart? Here. Mayor Weir? Here. Okay. Um, our next speaker is Jason White, who um, would like to speak to us about options regarding the pit bull issue. Good evening. My name is Jason White. I served on the joint committee that looked at the issue. I'm not here to give you the report yet. You get to hear me again next Monday night, along with Ralph Ruckman, the chair of the uh, Board of Health, and Tim Watkins, the chair of the uh, Joint Animal Welfare Committee. The reason I'm here tonight is just a few minutes because, as she mentioned, there are a variety of options that you all have, to, and one of them does have a timeline on it. So I just wanted to make sure you were well aware of that. We identify four obvious options for you all to consider. Uh, first of all, you can adopt the recommendation and, limit and, and vote to repeal the, the language of the pit bull uh, uh, issue from the city ordinance. Option number two would be you can uh, decide to do nothing, which in all probability will lead to a petition drive by those that are advocates on the issue, which is going to then move the issue back in front of you at a time further downstream. Option number three is for you to put it on the November ballot. That's the one that creates some time frame issues because to, to turn over to the election officials that you want to have an issue on the ballot, you've got to make a determination by close of business on the 25th. So for you to have that option in your toolkit, you'd really need to allow the, the, op the leaving open of this meeting so you could have an, an open council meeting at the next study session. Fourth option that's out there that's not as readily uh, visible is the fact that the Missouri legislature has been working on this issue. Now, if, you're, if you watch the Missouri legislature, they have large mm -hmm. numbers of bills and very few actually make it through the process. In the last several years, the legislation that would preempt local governments from having specific bans on specific breeds, and say that very well, would prohibit mm -hmm. cities from having bans on specific breeds it actually passed the Missouri House very solidly last year before the pandemic shut everything down. They, they scrambled. It was in the last moment scramble and didn't pass. But if they figure out how to manage the process of the insanity of Jefferson City, it's really not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Now, nobody in their right mind is going to predict when with, with Jefferson City. But there's really four routes of which this thing's going to get dealt with and want to make sure you're aware of them, most specifically the one with a tight time frame before you. Unless you've got questions, we'll see you next week. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank White. You. Um, I do think that we need to pause for a moment and, and discuss these options because there is a deadline to put something on the November 3rd ballot, which is one of the options that is before us and it has been requested to some extent, especially by our speaker this evening. Um, so I believe, Madam City Clerk, that that would need to be to the election board on November, or I'm sorry, excuse me, August 25th, which is a week from tomorrow. Um, in order to make that possible, um, since there's nothing regarding this on the agenda tonight, we can't adjourn that item. We would need to call a special meeting for Monday, the 24th, and put that on as an emergency ordinance to be voted on twice at the same meeting with a two-thirds majority vote if the council de decided to go that route and um, the council may not decide to go that route. But um, given that time frame, I think it's imperative that we decide tonight if we want if we want to leave, have that option available to us so that we can call a special meeting for next Monday to take up that particular item after the study session where we hear the full report and recommendation from the committee. Um, obviously, November 3rd is a very busy and important election day. The advantage, Mr. Same Manager, if I understand it, correctly is that we would only incur a portion of the cost of that election if we were to add something rather than incurring the entire cost of an election if we were put, to put this on a ballot 
say in February or April where there may or may not be anything else on the ballot from any other jurisdiction. So if it was a standalone election, like say next February, the, and, and there were no other issues on as the only jurisdiction with the measure, you're correct, we would bear the entire cost of that election. Okay. Um, so why don't we just think about that through this me meeting and at the end of tonight's meeting in the council member comments, we can discuss that further if we want, unless you know, if, unless you don't need time and you want to make a determination now to give us that option. Do you rather, you want to do it I, now or wait? I'm fine with waiting if we want to. I did have a question. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> maybe the clerk or somebody here knows this uh if we don't put it on if we don't agree to do the emergency and put it on the ballot for november and there is a petition what's the protocol does it automatically we have to have the election or do we get to choose the ballot that it goes on if there is a petition and they have and they meet the requirement the number of signatures that they would need, which would be a statewide or statewide, excuse me, citywide election. Um, the council can either accept the petition or the council can elect to put the, it on the next um, available election date. So whatever the next um, time, available time for an election, it would have to go on that one. Do we know uh, what the difference in cost just approximately would be between if we hurry to do it in November or if it was say it's the only thing on a ballot? I, I don't know what the issue would be for November. I, I, I just hate to speculate. I can tell you when we've had standalone elections though, that's ranged between a hundred to $200,000 depending on which election cycle you're hitting. Um, I don't just, I would be making a really irresponsible guess if I tried to speculate the November number though. Okay, are there any other questions? Madam Mayor? Yes. If I may, how, so the, the history of, of this, Madam City Clerk, perhaps you can dive in here as well. Um, how was this brought forth to the council in the first place and how do those steps move forward with, with that petition? If the individuals decided to do an initiative petition, they'd have to get the required amount of signatures, which is outlined in the charter in Article 7, and then that would be brought forward to the council, quite similar to the AMI situation, if you recall that. I do recall that. Is that how this was, is, that, is, is this how the ban was established, was through that initial, initial petition the brought original before the city council? I don't recall. I'd have to look and see how that was passed previously. Okay. I have to say that we're discussing something that's not on our agenda, and I've had problems in the past discussing things that were not on our agenda, and I'm not comfortable discussing the substance of this because it has not been on our agenda. I don't think it's appropriate. Any other comments or questions? Okay, um, next we have a proclamation for National Preparedness Month, Madam City Clerk. Whereas National Preparedness Month is a nationwide event held each September, and whereas the goal of National Preparedness Month is to increase public awareness about the importance of preparing for emergencies and to encourage <coughs> individuals to take action. And whereas the City of Independence will not truly be prepared for a disaster and or pandemic, until every individual, family, and business takes personal responsibility for being prepared. And whereas all residents of the City of Independence should take steps to prepare for emergencies because residents must have the ability to care for themselves and their families for an extended period of time during an emergency. Whereas the residents of Independence should read and follow the City of Independence Citizens Plan found on the City of Independence Emergency Preparedness Division website and learn of the necessary preparedness actions and COVID-19 safety precautions and guidance. And whereas the current COVID-19 pandemic and other natural disasters throughout the United States are having a severe effect upon the United States and the City of Independence and consequently making the importance of pre-planning and preparedness abundantly clear. 
and whereas the City of Independence officially recognizes many volunteers involved with the Medical Reserve Corps Greater Kansas City, the Community Emergency Response Team, the Disaster Animal Response Team, <clears throat> the Emergency Communications Service, Fire Explorers, Storm Spotters, Event Safety, Search and Rescue, Planning, and Logistical Sections, and the Specialized Emergency Operations Center. Command staff volunteers who routinely offer their invaluable services to make our community safer. Now therefore, Eileen and Weir, Mayor of the City of Independence, Missouri, hereby proclaim September 2020 as National Preparedness Month. Thank you. Dante, would you like to come up? I think it's been National Preparedness Year. <laughs> I want to all recognize it this month. <laughs> Okay, um, this brings us to our consent agenda. Mr. Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Madam yes. Mayor, I move to approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, the city manager has asked um, to pull items one, two, three, and four. Are there any other items any council member wishes pulled for separate consideration? Madam Mayor. Yes. Under resolutions number one, please. Okay. Any others? Um, Ma Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda? Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. DeLisi? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Uh, Mr. City Manager, do you want to talk about one, two, three, and four? Certainly, um, Madam Mayor, members of the council, last August, the voters of Independence approved the implementation of the use tax that was commonly known around here as Proposition P, of which um, half of the funds were to be $750,000 to support the animal shelter operations and the other half of those funds to support uh, the hiring of 30 new police personnel. Uh, in April of this year, um, uh, to clarify, uh, city staff took an item to the Public Safety Oversight Committee who's responsible for seeing, overseeing the um, police portion of that use tax. Uh, we estimate it's about $98,000, $99,000 to fully equip an officer, including their uh, uniform, supplies, vehicle, the academy costs, et cetera. Um, the the um, committee did find that to be in keeping with the um, provisions of the tax. However, even though we've generally discussed that with the committee, because this is really our first you know, one out of the shoot where we would be purchasing equipment uh, for officers associated with the tax. I believe it would be appropriate to have that committee review these four items specifically for appropriateness um, so that the council um, has just an extra set of eyes on this and some assurances about that. So it would be my recommendation that uh, between now and your next meeting, which would be September 8th, uh, that staff call a meeting of the Public Safety Oversight <coughs> Committee to have them review these four items and bring forward a recommendation on each of the four items. Okay, are there comments or questions on one, two, three, and four? Mr. City Manager, could you, um, you and I discussed this earlier, and I am a firm believer that we should not buy equipment for officers that we haven't hired yet. And would you please pass my firm commitment to the Public Safety Service Commission? I mean, one of these items was to buy three cars, but we don't have officers hired under this tax to drive those cars. So I do not believe it's appropriate to buy equipment for future employees. And I just wish you would pass that on to the committee members, please. Thank you. Other comments? Yes, Mr. Yes. Mr. City Manager. Um, I, I noticed that we were pulling money from two of the budget items. That, that's where, but I'm looking at the language. I, I asked you to send me some of the, the, um, the language on the, uh, the resolution and then the ballot initiative. And under the use tax, I, I was noticing there's uh, a, a description of the, of the line item and then it broke it down. And nowhere did I see this, um, the, 
the ability to create this, this budget item, these line items underneath with uh, operating expenses and equipment. So if we're going to go back, I'd like to see that our budget is uh, also discussed and that we make a correction to the budget under the use tax program and that it would eliminate this. It, it, it's just strictly salaries. So to me, it's a line item. It should just say salaries and benefits, and that's all it should be. And I know, I know that whoever drafted the budget, whoever created the budget, uh, may have thought it to be reasonable, but it's not responsible. And I just want to make sure that we press that issue that just because it may seem reasonable to create line items, it's not, it may not be responsible. And I think we need to, to raise that standard to, 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 and ask those questions. Is, is our action re reasonable and is it responsible? Thank you, good point, okay. and, and we can amend that to reflect it along the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Mr. City Manager, also on uh, the September 8th for this, yeah. I would like to see, if possible, the assigned cars to which officers and uh, we're going to have some retiring, so attrition, um, what kind of surplus we have with them vehicles. I know um, I heard today that you're very successful in getting some recruits who are about nine months out and stuff. Just kind of laying it out there to see what, what kind of inventory we have <clears throat> and uh, on, the, on, the, on the attrition and stuff. Yeah, I follow you. We'll get that as part of the report for you as well. Thank you. Certainly. Madam Mayor. Yes. Actually, a question for the city yes. manager. Um, well, first of all, I just want to say I don't like the idea of using the Prop P money for the purchase of the equipment. Um, I don't really think that's what the voters out there are voting for. And we're not anywhere close to hiring 30 officers, so I don't think that's been fulfilled. Um, but my actual question was, um, was it put out to bid that we use like a local Ford dealership, like for instance, Metro or Matt Ford? And what's the reason we're not using them? Yeah, and I'll go really high level on this. And if the if the council wants more detail down the road, well, I'd be happy to provide that. But, but at a very high level, the good question that council member Stewart's asking, we're part of a regional, so Kansas City Metro area, regional uh, purchasing cooperative uh, where cities come in in bulk trying to get the best deal possible rather than one city. The idea is that the economies of scale, multiple cities purchasing off of this, we can get a better price than what somebody could as an individual on the open market. Um, and then in our case, independents would say we're looking to get 13 Ford Explorers and the dealers are all made aware of that um, and, and have the opportunity to um, bid, if you will, through that cooperating purchasing agreement. Um, and in this case, Shiny Mission Ford was the one that came in. Um, I know recently uh, Landmark Dodge was able to do a deal with a city over in Kansas. So um, it, it kind of shakes out differently in different circumstances but in, in this one, that was what the, the low bid came in through the cooperative purchasing agreement. Okay, then one other question. Certainly. Um, you said they're not making the, the Dodge Charger anymore, and I think there was another vehicle listed in there. Yeah. Um, but the Ford Explorer, that uses a lot of gas. And do they not use the ex make the Escape vehicle anymore either? Because I know there are some departments that have Ford Escapes as their... Um, I, and I can get, I, I honestly don't know the specs of why this particular vehicle was selected. Um, I can ask the chief if you'd like a little more detail right now to have him come forward and just give you a, a, a quick update on that, if you don't mind, chief. Good evening, mayor, members of the council, Brad Holes, the chief of police. Um, to start, I don't know if they're pursuit rated. Um, you know, it depends on what cars we're buying for. If it's a ministry of staff, there's not going to be pursuit rated. Frontline cars are pursuit rated. Um, as far as the, the Dodges, yeah, they stopped making. They're going to continue making them, but they stopped after we bought, I think it was the 10. We were hoping to save quite a bit of money using those vehicles. They stopped production. We have been told we don't know how much they're going to be when they start producing them again, but the dimensions on the inside is going to be different. So therefore you have to buy, not all, but like cages and all that. For years we've done really good because we can just take cages from vehicles. Um, we've refurbished light bars in-house for 10 years, um, but we're at the position now, those light bars need to be replaced. So I hope that answers your question. I just don't know if they're pursuit rated or not. 
Okay, thank you. I want to thank <coughs> Chief, sorry. Chief. Um, on these, uh, you know, being that we chose to be a green city, has any, have you investigated a, a uh, electric car? Some of them, they say, run, outrun a Corvette. So I don't know if we looked into it since we have uh, chosen to be a green city here, why we're not looking at maybe a hybrid even. Yeah, well, we've researched it. We've never expensive. demoed one, though, I can tell you that. I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't. We just have yet to do that because a lot of it comes down for us trying to save money with the installs and keeping the same equipment and all that. Mm -hmm. But we can certainly, there's a lot of different things out there now that we didn't have even two years ago. Madam Mayor. Yes. Regarding to the uh, vehicle pricing and the packaging that you were discussing, I, I remember maybe two years or so ago, we were looking at a similar situation. And from talking to some of the guys in, in, in the industry, I mean, or I prefer to buy local, of course, but sometimes they don't even put a bid in on some of these projects and these cars and stuff. So we have to look outside of the city, unfortunately, because for whatever reason, our Miracle Mile guys don't bid on, on the projects around here. So at, at sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I really have no scientific reason of why that is. And I will tell you uh, all the warranty work and even work outside of warranty, Metro Ford does that work for us. Uh, they're a very good business and we do well, a lot of different agencies around here use them as well. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Anything else for the Chief? Um, I did, I mean, this caught my eye too because this is, a very, this is a very important issue to our city and we want to make sure that it's handled precisely correctly. So I, I appreciate the recommendation to send this back and take another look at it. I did reread the ordinance. There's a lot of things that go into um, into this, there's the ballot language, there's the ordinance, there was, um, you know, work done by citizen committees. Um, I didn't think to look at the budget, so that's a good cross check as well in the future. Um, and, you know, just a lot of discussion, and I know what this council discussed, which was, you know, the total cost of an officer, not just salary and wages, but, you know, you can't hire an officer and then not have a a weapon, a uniform, a, a car, you know, so on and so forth for that officer. So, but it's not clear. And so I think it's a very good idea to send um, these four items back and, and make sure we get this exactly right with the expectations of the community. Um, so we would just need a motion to postpone one, two, three, and four till September 8th and remand that back to staff. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Do you want to do them one at a time, Becky, or can we do them all at once? I think it's successful to do them all at once. Okay, That's fine. very good. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, resolution 20767. Um, I just I wanted to just ask the um, city manager just to review this policy just so that uh, if if folks aren't aware of what this policy is for procurement and uh, why it was necessary please I'd be happy to do so um, the General Assembly of the state of Missouri passed legislation uh, that will become effective August 28th of this month um, requiring municipalities to have um, certain assurances in place against anti-discrimination, particularly uh, against the nation of Israel. So this was a bill that was, as I mentioned, the Anti-Discrimination Act passed by the Missouri General Assembly. Um, really, we as a local governing body don't have um, much say in this. This is now the law of the state of Missouri, and we um, are simply recommending as staff that we update our procurement manual to reflect that we're in compliance with state law. Any other comments or questions? Councilman, would you like to make a motion? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'd like to move to approve 20-767. Uh, second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Uh, resolution passes. Okay, this brings us to our public hearings. The first is a public hearing for the application 
by Steve McBee requesting a rezoning from R12 to family residential to C2 general commercial for the properties located at 1401, 1409, 1503, and 1505 East 23rd Street. This is new information only. Mr. Scannell. Yes, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Tom Scannell. I'm the Community Development Director. Uh, this application uh, was considered by the Planning Commission on July uh, 14th. The Planning Commission uh, recommended in favor of this, and there's no new information to report on this case. Okay, is there any comments or questions from the Council on the public hearing? Okay, public hearing is closed. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-060, an ordinance approving a rezoning from District R6 single family residential to District C2 general commercial for the properties at 1401, 1409, 1503, and 1505 East 23rd Street South in Independence, Missouri. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilmember DeLucci. I understand some people are here with the traffic study that we're going to yes. give a presentation to us. I had a problem with the traffic study, so I wondered if we could have a small presentation on it. Mr. City Manager. Yeah, we would be happy to. Um, <laughs> I believe this was mentioned at the last council meeting, yeah. so we do have a liaison from the company that did that here. Very good. Good evening, Jeff Wilkie from Trans Systems, 2400 Pershing, Kansas City, Missouri. So I'm a licensed professional engineer and certified professional traffic operations engineer. And I prepared, uh, my company prepared this traffic study as we do throughout the metropolitan area. So we um, used all industry standard practices as we prepared the study. The study was reviewed by the city and by MoDOT's professional engineering staff and has been accepted. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the study. I'm just concerned, sir. We're moving on some of these intersections that are proposed from a D to an F, and then 40 years in the future, they get even worse to like a double F or something. And I don't see how that's acceptable to good city planning. And I guess, does MoDOT not look to see that the traffic intersections fail? Or is that not a requirement of the city? Or does it simply not matter? I, I'm just so confused. Sure. Well, level of service is a kind of a qualitative assessment of, of traffic, how we feel traffic is operating. So we've assigned it to different delay scores or the amount of time you sit in your vehicle while waiting at the stop sign. And it is not uncommon on a busy arterial street to see some longer delays. Typically, we're shooting for level of service D or better, but oftentimes along busy corridors at peak times, we see levels of service E and F. Um, it, it, there's a number of driveways along 23rd Street today. I would figure some of those are probably operating similarly right now. Um, it's a situation where we look at what improvements could be made that are practical and there aren't a lot of options available at a location like this these two site driveways where traffic signalization is not an option the volumes are well below those thresholds well plus MoDOT would never let a traffic signal go in because of the high V traffic signal it'd be too close wouldn't it correct it yeah. wouldn't it it's wouldn't un, meet the requirements right it's an undesirable spacing for a traffic and, signal and Hayden and Kings Highway, and there's a third street there, Woodbury or Woodbridge, I forget. Woodbury, uh-huh. All three of them don't meet the MoDOT requirements of distance between each other. And, and they're just simply side streets. And we're talking about putting in a development, which I, I read the report, they're talking about in the future putting 68 apartments back in lot four and put a car lot here and then commercial on the other two. Okay. And I just don't see how someone's going to be trying to exit those and then going left because we're not restricting left turns. We're allowing left turns from those sites. Correct. And I've been there at 4 in the afternoon, and you'd have to be a little bit crazy to go left from Hayden to try and get to Kansas City. I mean, the traffic is awful. And, and yet you're, you're saying that this development meets the requirements? Okay, 
Okay. Am I wrong well, well, in saying that you're you're saying left turns are allowed? Left turns are allowed. Yeah, and we, as we've documented in the study, and they will experience a lower level of service at peak times. So we're talking about the the peak hour a.m. and peak hour for the p.m. That's typically what we study in traffic. You know, other times of days we'll probably experience better operations as traffic volumes are lower on 23rd Street. And the traffic study you did didn't really do a traffic study because of COVID. So you looked at past traffic patterns. Correct. We couldn't collect traffic counts at the time of the study because the, the stay-at-home orders were in effect. So we used traffic volumes that were several years older from MoDOT's website uh, that reflected conditions without a shutdown in place. And so your traffic study assumed a car wash. Yes. And it assumed the 68 apartments in the back. Correct. What did it assume for lots two and three? We had a general office land use was assumed on that parcel. Is that proposed within this development plan? That is what I was provided with to study from the developer, yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions for this gentleman? Yes, Councilman? Um, <clears throat> Uh, Councilman DeLucy mentioned this, but the distances between the street and the driveway for this development are less than the 440 feet that are typically rec recommended by MoDOT. You're familiar with that? You're talking about the, the spacings between each of the site driveways? Yes. Along 23rd? Yeah, MoDOT has guidance in their engineering policy guide for what they want between driveways. So yes, we're familiar that they are less than the, than MoDOT's desired spacing. So let me ask you a hypothetical, and you're familiar with the site plan that has the lot one, two, and three, and number three is where the car wash is going to go. Mm -hmm. So what? Let's say we have lots one and two developed at some point. Those driveways are going to be even less restricted. I mean, they're going to be even closer together. Than MoDOTs. Right now we're at 210 feet, 330 feet. The recommendation is 440 feet. We had two more driveways in there for two separate lots. They're going to be like 50 feet apart, right? Hypothetically. I mean, what would a traffic study look like then? Can you give me any kind of idea whether that would be acceptable, whether you've seen that before, whether that would be a concern of yours? You know, it, it would depend on the plan that's presented that you'd have to analyze with it. I think the, the, the thought with these access points being closer than MoDOT standard spacing is that they actually align with existing intersections across on the other side of the street. And that's a strong access management principle that you try to consolidate the access to inter existing intersections if you can or, or limit the number. So adding an additional intersection in there would be a, a totally different application uh, for us to have to study it would sure be a, a different study there there wouldn't there's not any more streets though for them to line up with no there are not right right that's so, it so mm -hmm. um you don't deal with the elevation you're strictly traffic correct okay uh that's all Okay, that. well then we'll get Mr. Scannell back up to answer your elevation question. Are there any other questions on the traffic portion? Okay. Councilman Hobart, did you have a question about the elevation from Mr. Scannell? Just briefly, because there's a giant hill there on that property, do you know if the, from what I read in the plan, the elevation is being lowered? That is correct. So the, so the developer intends to lower the, that, hill that was seen from 23rd Street, bring that down closer to the grade of uh, 23rd Street so that they have that nice visibility there along 23rd Street instead of being elevated. And that, the elevation change, the, re the reduction in the hill will be across all those first three lots? That's my understanding. And once we get detailed plans, we will uh, be able to, to definitely answer that. Madam Mayor. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Scannell, office is planned on lots two and one, I think, two and three. but we're rezoning it to commercial. Why are we rezoning it to commercial? 
Uh, C2 is, is what they have re requested to rezone the property to. Um, C2 is our general commercial district. Um, when they had filed their application, uh, this plan had gone through many iterations as we uh, worked with the developer on addressing uh, the traffic concerns and uh, they settled on the general office uses, which is allowed in the C2 district. But office use has a less traffic impact than commercial use, correct? Correct, yes. So this traffic study assumes office use on two of the four lots, correct? Correct, yes. But we're rezoning it to higher intensity traffic use, correct? We are rezoning it to, to C2, which, like I, like I said, does allow for general office use. Okay, thanks. And one thing to uh, note, at the Planning Commission meeting, there was a condition that was placed on the plat that stated that if there any use other than general office was proposed on either of those two front lots, they had to come back with a revised traffic study to account for that. Uh, Even if we rezone it, C2? Correct, yes. Why? It's already zoned C2. Correct, but, but the traffic study is based on general office. Okay, okay, wait one second. So you're saying we're going to rezone it to C2 today, but tomorrow if they decide they don't want to put office in, which we already know they don't want to put office in, we're going to make them do another traffic study for commercial? Is that what you're saying? That is, that was the discussion at the Planning Commission meeting, yes, and that was a, a condition that was placed. How can we do that? M Madam Lawyer, one something is C2, it's C2, right? It is C2, but if the use changes and the staff wishes to see additional detail that will help them determine whether the use is appropriate and the infrastructure is gonna work for that use, then before building permits are issued, staff has the ability to request more information. Even though we zoned at C2? Correct. Are there any other comments or questions on this bill? Madam Mayor. Yes. I just have something real quick. Um, I don't know if it's the best time to point this out, but I'm gonna be abstaining on this um, just simply uh, because I've Fam have family members that have known Mr. McBee fam McBee's family members and we've been friends for decades so that would be the reason why okay thank you very much thank you okay appreciate that okay um hearing no other comments or questions Mayor, oh I'm sorry i my apologies no go we're, ahead we're real quickly Mr. Scannell so Mr. Uh, McBee knows that there's an expectation if he wants to put something else in there other than this the office use that he understands and has accepted or it's been told to him he'll have to do another traffic study correct yes and just to chime in um what they would do is just update the existing traffic study so the burden wouldn't be as heavy as if they had to start from scratch they would just need to input the new use and update the traffic study so it's not that big of an undertaking as right i understand and we couldn't tell him no well correct if it's already zoned c2 well he the use needs to work and the conditions need to be met uh, we have a whole bunch of other things in the code that need to be met before building permits can be issued so while the zoning is one item there are a bunch of other things that need to be met as well so okay. those things would all be reviewed before building permits could be issued okay any other comments or questions Okay, hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Abstain. DeLucy? No. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Bill pa ordinance passes. Our next um, public hearing is a public hearing for the application by Steve McBee requesting a special use permit to operate a tunnel car wash and coffee shop at 1503 and 1505 East 23rd Street. New information only, Mr. Scannell. Yes, this special use permit for the car wash was considered by the Planning Commission on July 14th with the 
uh, rezoning application. The Planning Commission recommended approval of the application, and there is no new information to report on this case. Are there any comments or questions from the Council on the public hearing? Public hearing is closed. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-061, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a car wash at 1503 and 1505 East 23rd Street South in Independence, Missouri. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Abstain. DeLucy? No. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Um, the next public hearing is for the amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 14 of the Independent City Code, relating to accessory building and residential fence setbacks in Section 14-400-01 and 14-400-02. This is a full public hearing. Mr. Scannell. Yes, this uh, Unified Development Ordinance, also known as UDO, uh, is looking at or seeks to amend the accessory building uh, setback requirements. Uh, this mainly affects those residential lots that are corner lots. Um, and it is looking at the exterior setback, so meaning the setback from the, from the street. Um, we have had uh, a number of uh, inquiries into these, these setbacks. We researched it, compared our regulations to uh, other communities in regards to these accessory setbacks, as we how we handle them on corner lots. Found out we were out of out of compliance or out of uh, the norm with our uh, peer communities. So we're seeking that adjustment to try to give those people who have corner lots uh, the ability to use a little more of their their property to site or to locate an accessory. Building so an accessory building think of a carport or a shed or a detached garage the other portion of this uh, UDO amendment uh, is in regards to residential fences uh, Again dealing with with fences on on corner lots and and this seeks to take our our fence Standards back to what they were uh, pre UDO so pre July 1st of 2009 uh, the Planning Commission held their public hearing on July 14th, and they recommended approval of uh, both of these amendments. So that concludes staff's presentation. Okay, this is a full public hearing. Um, is there anybody here who wishes to speak in favor of this amendment? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this amendment? Are there any comments or questions from the council on the public hearing? Okay, the public hearing is closed. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-062, an ordinance amending the Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 14 of the Independent City Code pertaining to accessory building and residential fence setbacks. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. We have two non-ordinance action items this evening. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-768, a resolution approving a preliminary plat of McBee Landing located at 1401, 1409, 1503, and 1505 East 23rd Street South and South 23rd, or excuse me, 23 South Hayden Street in Independence, Missouri. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Abstain. DeLucy? No. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item passes. Council action is requested to authorize the city manager to execute the sub-awardee agreement between the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority and the City of Independence for the CARES Act formula grant. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item passes. This takes us to our second readings. Bill number 20-063, an ordinance finding, determining, and declaring the necessity of acquiring temporary construction and grading easements for the Independence Power and Light Substation K South Feeder Rebuild, project number 201706, 
authorizing the negotiation and eminent domain proceedings if necessary, approving the plans and specifications for the project, authorizing the use of experts as needed, authorizing and directing the execution of documents and the payment of funds to property owners or others holding property rights in conjunction with the property. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 20-064, an ordinance amending Article 20, Fireworks of Chapter 5 of the Independent City Code and making, the, making other necessary revisions. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I Go ahead. <laughs> well, I think who, who? Up was first. Go ahead. Stan Meyer. I'm sorry. Yeah, on this uh, bill here, I, I have a little problem, but we can enforce what we have, and I think this is an unenforceable thing. We had a bad year due to the wind and stuff. Um, I don't know. I just I can't really support this. Um, I think next year will be a different year. We'll have our hopefully have our own display. I just I feel like we're going to wear our police department out chasing this. Uh, I mean, it's bad enough the way it is, let alone you start throwing that in there and then neighbors are screaming at the other neighbors. I think it just causes a lot of issues. Okay, thank you. Councilman Steinmeier? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I also have a problem with, with just passing ordinances that are not going to be able to be enforced. I think we, this is one of those ordinances that will just put a lot of undue pressure on our police department. People can get fireworks. They can bring them into pen, independence. I remember when I was growing up in Kentucky Hills, we had an ordinance similar to this, and every 4th of July, we were in the backyard firing them off. That's the only time my dad was an outlaw. But we did, we did it celebrating uh, our nation's independence. And so one of the things that I am concerned about, if we're going to have this ordinance, just be reminded that what you're saying is that you don't want the groups that sell fireworks and the nonprofits that sell, and they're all nonprofits, like 24 Group Against Huntinger, Pop Warner Football, which I particularly like because I played Pop Warner Football. I was grateful for the opportunity to do so. Uh, Messiah Lutheran, who helped with the burial of my father and the funeral, I, I want to support them. Mill Creek Elementary, we know there's at least two council members sitting up here today that are graduates of Mill Creek Elementary, and that may be the highest sixth grade that uh, education Mr. Huff has, but he was a proud member of Mill Creek. So, and Truman Habitat for Humanity. So there will be some effect on this. And I, I, I just worry that, again, it's, it's something that makes us all happy and feel good at the moment. Uh, people will still be able to buy them. The question is, do you want them to buy them outside the city and bring them in? Or if we know they're, they're going to buy them, are we going to be supportive of our nonprofits? So just something to think about tonight. Okay. Mr. City Manager, this uh, brings us in line with Lee Summit, Blue Springs, Grain Valley, the county, correct? As far as what's allowed to be sold, correct. Right. I'm not familiar with their period of time of when they're right. allowed to sell. But, but, but the actual sales, the inventory, I mean, correct. we are the outlaw in allowing bigger sales than the other outlying areas, correct? We're less restrictive right. on what we allow. Like we have so. bottle rockets and sky yeah. lanterns and all that. Okay, I just wanted to be sure I understood what the ordinance was. Madam Mayor. Yes. So I just want to say I don't mind as far as restricting bottle rockets or you know, any of the aerial stuff. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is the, um, the decreasing the time frame that we can um, sell them. So, and I'm gonna be voting no on this, just so. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? No. Perkins? No. Stewart? No. DeLucy? <laughs> yes. Steinmeier? No. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance fails. Um, this takes us to our first readings. These will have their second reading on September the 8th. Bill number 20-056, an ordinance accepting a 20-foot general utility easement to the city across Little Blue Valley Sewer District's property at 21101 East 78 Highway. 
Bill number 20-065, an ordinance approving a rezoning from District I-1 Industrial to District R-6 Single Family Residential for the properties at 711 and 715 South Northern Boulevard in Independence, Missouri. Bill number 20-066, an ordinance vacating an existing three-foot utility easement recorded in book 1539 at page 476 of the Jackson County Deed Records and located at 11004 East 40 Highway. Bill number 20-067, an ordinance vacating an existing 10-foot utility easement recorded in book 1387 at page 1367 of the Jackson County Deed Records and located at 11004 East 40 Highway. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before I move on to my, the council member comments, um, for those who may have tuned in a few minutes late, I just wanted to um, share what we, I shared at the beginning of the meeting. Um, as we all know, our former mayor, Don Rimel, passed away on August 12th. He, there will be a public celebration that family encourages all of Mayor Rimel's friends and the public to attend. It will be on August 22nd at 4 o'clock p.m. at the Cable Dahmer Arena. Uh, you will be required to wear a mask if you plan to attend, and there will be so social distancing requirements in place. Um, the family is asking for contributions to some of uh, the family's favorite charities, which include the Independent Sister City, the Chicago Alton Depot, Independence Historical Sites, Mid-Continent Genealogy Center or a favorite independence charity of your choice. So if you wish to make a memorial contribution in memory of Mayor Don Rimel, they're requesting contributions to those charities. So again, that'll be at 4 o'clock p.m. on August 22nd at the Cable Dahmer Arena. Um, so this takes us to council member comments. Um, in Respect for your comments earlier, Councilmember DeLucy, I will make a motion to call a special meeting on um, August the 24th to consider a emergency ordinance placing the recommendation of the Animal Welfare Committee and the um, Advisory Board of Health on the November 3rd ballot. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Madam Mayor. Yes. If I'm understanding the, the conversation that we had earlier, there wasn't, did they, there was one individual who suggested that we should, the other individual gave out the options. Correct. Um, my concern is that if we don't, that won't be an option if we don't have something to consider next Monday. If I, I just, I'm, I'm trying to leave all the options open. <laughs> we will have the presentation, the full presentation and the recommendation on Monday, but without a special meeting and an emergency um, ordinance, there'll be no opportunity to get that on the ballot for November the 3rd. So I'm just making sure that I, my my opinion is that this council should avail itself of all the options. Sure. Fair enough. Thank you. And we can vote no on that, um, of course. And as it is an emergency, it will require two thirds for majority vote if that's the direction the council would choose to go. And I would just like to say, Madam Mayor, that this is a big enough issue that a week's notice to people in this environment is not enough time. I do not know what the urgency is. We've had the animal welfare group and we've had the health committee group, but we've not had people come and address us directly. And what we're talking about is in seven days, reversing a law that's been in effect for 11 years. And I've not heard any reason other than, gee, we wanna make it a cheap election. That's not good enough for me. I, I think we need enough time to have people know what the issue is and to come and talk to their council, send email, have discussion. It's big enough. And if that means we don't make November, then we don't make November. 
that's fine. I'm just making all the options available that have, that are being presented. And I have received communication from citizens requesting that we try to get this onto the November ballot. So I just don't want to eliminate um, that option. Yes. Madam Mayor, um, I agree this is a big deal and the citizens of the city should be the ones speaking on this or voting on it mm -hmm. to have their voices heard. Um, you know, the thing that bothers me is it took uh, some people out here that worked their tails off to bring a petition to this, to, not to this council, but the council before. Mm -hmm. And uh, they chose to go ahead and, and ban the pit bulls or specific breeds. So, um, but I do believe <clears throat> that we definitely need to uh, have the public vote on this. I don't just don't know when I agree with uh, Councilman DeLucci. I know that's hard to believe. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, I'd just like to chime in briefly. You know, I, <clears throat> we've all heard from voters uh, on both sides, uh, some local, some not. And it is absolutely a pivotal issue in the city. Uh, I think we probably would all agree on that. Uh, I think we would probably all agree ultimately that it should probably be decided by a vote, public vote at some point. And whether we would put that on the ballot for those folks or whether they need to see if they can get the signatures for a petition, uh, I can't say I'm decided on, but I would support leaving that option open uh, for us to vote on next week. To Councilman DeLucy's point, uh, my desire is not to deprive anyone of a, of a voice or uh, their opinion on this matter, of course. Um, ultimately, do economics factor into it? A bit for me, they do, because if we, if we can, if it's gonna end up on a ballot, and we can save the city $100,000, total made up number, uh, then there is at least a tiny bit of value in that. Mm -hmm. I made the motion so we could have discussion. So, okay. Councilman Steinmeier. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I just wanna remind folks that uh, um, there was over 4,400 signatures collected and anybody that's ever gone out and collected signatures knows that's a big number and that's a lot of work I have no problem I, I I have no problem one way or the other I just I am not willing to, to rush to a decision and put something on a ballot uh, when a lot of people made a lot of efforts to collect a lot of signatures to bring to the council and I think that 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 type of effort needs to be matched on an opposing side and if they want to bring us those signatures, I'd be more than happy to discuss the next step of the week. But I, I feel that the voters should decide this. I know, again, I'm gonna say it, my wife said that this to me this week and I really fully believe it, that what is reasonable is not always the most responsible thing. I don't wanna rush to this. I'm gonna vote no. I don't feel like it's necessary. The reasonable thing and the and the responsible thing is to see the efforts on the other side, bring it to our attention, and let's put it to the people of Independence to decide. It's not up to this council to make those type of decisions when so many of our residents spoke in favor one way or the other. I say let's take it back to the people, but let's that opposition party come back with the same effort. So my motion is to call a special meeting to vote on this. I just want to be clear. I'm not asking that we vote to put it on the, you know, vote to put it on the ballot. I'm saying the motion is, do we want to have, have a special meeting to consider that option? I just want to be clear on that. Thank Any you. other discussion? Thank you for the clarity. Okay. Um, Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll on the motion to call a special meeting on for August 24th. I'm getting my it's screwed up. August 24th. Council members Huff? No. Perkins? No. Stewart? Yes. DeLucy? No. Steinmeier? No. 
Hobart? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Motion fails. Okay. Council member comments. Um, I'll start on my right with Council member Stewart. Um, I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Council member Perkins. Councilman Huff. Yes, I do. Um, I had a couple comments here. Um, I had a phone call today. Uh, this be Mr. City Manager. Uh, man said that he's been trying to build, get a building permit for over four months, and says that they tell him that there's backlog and they can't get to it. Um, of course, you know, as a city employee, so I know. Everybody always says that kind of stuff, but I'd be willing to give his name up after the meeting and maybe we can research that, see what's exactly going on because we definitely don't want to show, uh, slow down any buildings. Um, number two, the Bass Pro audit, where are we at with it? I'll ask our finance director to come up and give you an update on that. Uh, good evening, Brian Kidney, the Director of Finance Administration. Uh, we, we actually did get the draft today. So the draft is going through quality control on our side, and we should be able to have a draft here. Um, I'll, I'll leave it to city manager when he'd want to present um, a draft on that. So we don't have a time yet. Mr. City Manager. It there's a process with an audit is what I'm hearing that yeah. we're under a quality control review right now and then once that's completed we have no reason to sit on it after that right I just on that I hope that um, I've been doing a little work on this thing and myself personally and I find it really hard to believe that we've taken this um, bond backing and actually made it um, you know like a, a obligation without the city uh, citizens approving that. Um, I know it's been going on for a while, and then I kick back and think, uh, since there's no skin in the game for the, the, uh, the developer out there and everything, it's all on the city. I hope that's addressed in this thing. It just seems that, um, you know, the, the bond issue, I'm, I'm just wondering myself, we pay out all this money every time it comes due. Um, and then I think, well, why are we doing that? If we default, what's, what's the penalty? Okay, we lose a bond rating. Is it, are we gonna lose that much money in a bond rating if it, we're paying three million out and it cost us 500,000 because we move a point? I mean, I really don't know the answer to that. It just seems that we're kind of being held hostage here. And I hope that comes out in this audit because that's definitely what I wanted. I didn't, you know, I made it very clear to start with the forensic and it went to a comprehensive, but I hope that's addressed in there that there's something going on there that's not right. I mean, the burden's on all these taxpayers here, and I don't think that's fair. I think people should be held accountable, whoever they are, or whenever it happened. I know it was way before anybody on this council. So one other thing I had, uh, the procurement thing on uh, the July purchase, I, I think we need to maybe revisit this 100,000 mark. I was looking at last month for this July is $1.3 million. I had a couple questions, uh, Brian. You're on this one too. What, what is the utility municipal advisor for 50 grand? So that is a contract with PFM Public Advisors to be the municipal advisors um, for bond issues for the utilities. Okay, and then the other two I had questions on. We already settled the car thing. I was a city employee, so I know that we pulled it out of that pool. I just bothers me that we buy vehicles in Kansas. I wish we could get our people out here to support or get into that thing. But the other one I had was uh, Mr. Nail. Uh, there's a couple here kind of question. I'm trying to figure out what a 2021 winter summer peak operating study is for 50 grand. And the other one I have is Johnson Control Fire Protection, $60,000. That's $5,000 a month kind of maintenance or is that was there a project out there or something councilman this is uh, jim nail general okay. manager of power and light the uh, fire protection one that is the ongoing service agreement to maintain and inspect that the fire protection systems in the service center um, 
it's, it includes both the service center and the, the deluge system that's in the, in the power plant. Uh, that is still required to be in service in order for us to insure that building. But at $5,000 a month? Seems extremely high for an inspection, but. It was, it was bid, those were bid competitively. Okay. That was okay. the agreement that we got. The okay. other one, the uh, winter summer um, transmission studies, as part of our NERC obligations, we're required every year to do an analysis of potential events on our system and then devise also uh, contingency plans uh, to review those. Um, that We have that done by an outside, outside engineering firm that goes through and runs all those repetitive analysis and then so helps us develop the plan. We don't have the personnel to do that, 50 grand, that's almost another employee here. No, sir, we don't. And we've been, so, we've been doing that one outside for several years. No, just Part because we've been doing it doesn't mean it's right. I'm just wondering, it, it seems like a lot of money for something that you have. How many NERC guys down there working for you right now? Well, that's not a NERC study, that's an engineering study. Engineering study. Um, and it's part of it's the personnel and also it's the, the program that's required to run that depth of an analysis. Uh, it's quite a high powered uh, program that they use to run those. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Councilmember DeLuci. Nothing, thank you. Councilmember Steinmeier. Yes, I do. Uh, Mr. City Manager, I have, um, as you know, the first week I asked you to help me do two things in terms of the third district, specifically in the Valley, and that's rebuild trust and to help me um, understand some of the, uh, the zoning uh, under industrial. We, we've been, I asked you to, well, I challenged you and your staff to look at the business park language and to, to come back with something that uh, would match some of the expectations, some of the inputs that we've had uh, prior to my arrival, but knowing that having gone to all the meetings, the concerns of the Valley, because we need to do something and, and people out there want to do something. So I, I asked you to do those two things, the trust and, and help to kind of put together the new wording for business park and i just want to say to you after the second meeting that i was truly impressed with uh what tom scannell brought and and i thought he he is on the right track i think that the the folks and in, in the valley uh are going to um, i hope that they're going to be excited about where we're at he's he said he's about 70 80 percent we're going to work on some other things but I, you know, sometimes uh, the staff doesn't get appreciated enough and I just wanted, uh, Tom, I just wanted to tell you, thank you for, for what you've done to this point. Look forward to more input and, and getting this kind of finalized. And then the, the trust piece, let's, we're gonna bring some uh, people from the Valley in just to talk with them, get some input from them. So just, I thought it'd be nice to just rec recognize the efforts of your team and tell you that I appreciate it. The work still needs to be done. There's still much that we have to put together, but I'm excited about moving forward and the progress we're making as a city. And uh, if I don't move fast enough, you can always take me kicking and screaming, but that's the direction I wanna go, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Hobart. No, thank you. Mr. Same manager, anything this evening? Uh, just very briefly, I wanted uh, two weeks ago, the council voted to approve our allocation of our federal CARES Act dollars. Um, I signed those contract documents this past Thursday, um, had a conversation with the county administrator on Friday. Um, I believe um, early this week yet, if not by tomorrow, our funds will be wired to us and in our account. Um, ready to go to work for the people of independence. So I just wanted to update all of you on that and nothing else this evening, Mayor. Okay, let us know when those uh, get deposited, please. I certainly will, absolutely. Okay, we are adjourned. <laughs>